Hello and welcome to Designing Signings in AuthentiSign. Since you've already sent documents from Web Forms to AuthentiSign, information should be populated in the signing name. This signing name will show up as the subject line of the email that you send to your participants for signing. In this case, I'm going to edit it and just call it tenant name. The participant order is also something you can select in this section. Sign in line and simul sign of the options. Sign in line sends the email to one person at a time to review the documents and make signatures. Simul sign sends it to everyone who is a participant in the transaction at once. For most cases, simul sign is the correct solution. Let's jump into step two. Step two allows you to choose the participants in this transaction. I'm going to show you two ways to add a participant, which is through this menu. So I'm going to choose myself as a remote signer. In this case, a remote signer is someone who will be accessing the signing through email. You also have the option of reviewer. We don't currently recommend using in-person signer because it's a little bit buggy. So let's add me as the cooperating broker. So in this case, you can see my name and my role in the transaction. Why it's important to see the role is because the system at certain instances will auto-populate signing and initial fields based on the role assigned to the person in the transaction. So I'm going to manually input the tenant at this point. Name, email, and role are the three important fields to choose. In this case, the tenant is a tenant. You can choose multiple people for the same role, just in case you have two or maybe even three tenants. You can do that. I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to ensure that it's chosen as a remote signer. Now I'm going to hop over to step three. In step three, you can add any documents to the form sorry, to the transaction that weren't already imported from web forms. A use case for this would be something like importing a Schedule B from a listing. So just click Add if that's something you'd like to do. You have a variety of options to select from. You can use Upload a File if you'd like to use something that you've downloaded locally. And you can add that file by clicking it and selecting Open. In this case, I don't need to add any files. I'm just going to back out of this. Step four is probably the most important step. It's called design. And in design, you place fields for signatures, initials, and even time signed for this transaction. So let's start by selecting the correct signer at the top right over here. So I've selected myself. And now I'm going to click drag and drop. When you click drag and drop, you're given some options. The red options are mandatory signatures. Or initials. The green options are optional. I always recommend choosing the red options so your clients know exactly where to sign. I'm going to place the initial fields for this one page. I'm going to switch signers to the tenant and grab the initial page, sorry, initial section and drop it into the page. And you can continue to do so throughout the document. You have the option of signing, initialing, timestamps, and text box. Now, let's say you'd like to mark up a document. You also have that option. You can do anything from strike throughs to added text box. Once you've made any alterations to your contract, like strike throughs or text box, you want to make sure that you place initial fields over ch any changes that you've made. Once you're happy with all the fields you've placed, just click Next and send invitations. The document is now out for signing. You should advise your clients to check their emails. And you can check the status of the signing if you click signings. And then the first signing instance listed. So in this case, you can see neither of the people in this transaction have currently opened the signature email. This will also be where you will find a completed list of documents once everyone has signed. 
for future reference.